Chapter 36 In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah's reign, King Sennacherib of Assyria came to attack the fortified cities of Judah and conquered them. Then the king of Assyria sent his personal representative with a huge army from Lachish to confront King Hezekiah in Jerusalem. The Assyrians stopped beside the aqueduct that feeds water into the upper pool near the road leading to the field where cloth is bleached. These are the officials who went out to meet with them. Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, the palace administrator, Shibna, the court secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the royal historian. Then the Assyrian king's personal representative sent this message to King Hezekiah. This is what the great king of Assyria says. What are you trusting in that makes you so confident? Do you think that mere words can substitute for military skill and strength? Which of your allies will give you any military backing against Assyria? Will Egypt? If you lean on Egypt, you will find it to be a stick that breaks beneath your weight and pierces your hand. The pharaoh of Egypt is completely unreliable. But perhaps you will say, We are trusting in the Lord our God. But isn't he the one who was insulted by King Hezekiah? Didn't Hezekiah tear down his shrines and altars and make everyone in Judah worship only at the altar here in Jerusalem? I'll tell you what, my master, the king of Assyria, will strike a bargain with you. If you can find two thousand horsemen in your entire army, he will give you two thousand horses for them to ride on. With your tiny army, how can you think of challenging even the weakest contingent of my master's troops, even with the help of Egypt's chariots and horsemen? What's more, do you think we have invaded your land without the Lord's direction? The Lord himself told us, Go and destroy it. Then Eliakim, Shibna, and Joah said to the king's representative, Please speak to us in Aramaic, for we understand it well. Don't speak in Hebrew, for the people on the wall will hear. But Sennacherib's representative replied, My master wants everyone in Jerusalem to hear this, not just you. He wants them to know that if you do not surrender, this city will be put under siege. The people will become so hungry and thirsty that they will eat their own dung and drink their own urine. Then he stood and shouted in Hebrew to the people on the wall, Listen to this message from the king of Assyria. This is what the king says. Don't let King Hezekiah deceive you. He will never be able to rescue you. Don't let him fool you into trusting in the Lord by saying, The Lord will rescue us. This city will never be handed over to the Assyrian king. Don't listen to Hezekiah. These are the terms the king of Assyria is offering. Make peace with me. Open the gates and come out. Then I will allow each of you to continue eating from your own garden and drinking from your own well. Then I will arrange to take you to another land like this one, a country with bountiful harvests of grain and wine, bread and vineyards, a land of plenty. Don't let Hezekiah mislead you by saying the Lord will rescue us. Have the gods of any other nations ever saved their people from the king of Assyria? What happened to the gods of Hamath and Arpad? And what about the gods of Sepharvaim? Did they rescue Samaria from my power? What god of any nation has ever been able to save its people from my power? Name just one. So what makes you think that the Lord can rescue Jerusalem? But the people were silent and did not answer because Hezekiah had told them not to speak. Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, the palace administrator, Shibna, the court secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the royal historian, went back to Hezekiah. They tore their clothes in despair, and they went in to see the king and told him what the Assyrian representative had said.